What is up you guys? In this Python tutorial, we will be talking about the awesome Selenium package that is used to automate web browser interaction from Python. We see a whole lot of tasks that you usually do in your daily life that could be easily automated using Python Selenium. From web scraping to web interaction, picking different elements from the website, filling up forums, clicking buttons, extracting useful text, and many, many more. So without further ado, let's get started. This video is brought to you by Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes where millions of users learn from professionals in a multitude of various and exciting topics, varying from graphic design and web development to animation and production and many, many more. If you're creative and curious or even a lifelong learner, you will find something in Skillshare for you. Now Skillshare classes include a combination of video lessons and class projects. Classes are intentionally made under 60 minutes in order to fit any schedule. For example, I myself have found high interest in the following class entitled Animation for Illustration, Adding Movement with Procreate and Photoshop by Libby Vanderplug. Since I animate some of my videos, this class made it easier for a mathematical guy like myself to tap into the world of animation in a smooth way. Skillshare is organized specifically for learning and you won't have to deal with any ads and it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Time is a very valuable asset and no matter what 2021 brings, you can spend it creating something meaningful with Skillshare's online classes. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description below will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity with Skillshare. So the first thing you'd want to do is open a terminal. We're going to install Selenium using pip3. So pip3 install Selenium as such. Now since I have it, it's telling me requirement already satisfied. So no problem. Now that I have Selenium, make sure you have it. So you go to Python 3, import Selenium as such. And there you go. Next, what you'd want to do, and it's a really important step, is to install drivers so that you can open a browser using the drivers. Now, since I'm going to be using Chrome and in particular the Chromium driver, I'm going to type in sudo apt get install chromium dash chrome driver. Enter your password if any. Now, since I have it, it didn't take much time, but in case you don't, just leave it some time to download. Now that we have everything we need, I'm going to open VS Code as such. Okay, so this is VS Code. I'll open a folder. Let's go to desktop and just create any folder. I'm going to call it testing selenium. Oh, I don't need this terminal anymore. Open a new file, call it main py. Now we're ready to type in some Python code. So the first thing you'd want to do is import Selenium. So from Selenium import web driver. We need the web driver from Selenium. The second thing that you'd want to do is open a driver, an instance from web driver. Let's say I'm going to work with, see all those options here. You can open Chrome, you can open Edge, Firefox. You've got a whole lot of options, Opera browser. Safari, you really got a lot of options. Now, since I downloaded the Chromium driver, I'm going to stick to Chrome, so Chrome. And here, it's crucial to enter the path of the driver. Now, since I'm using Ubuntu, I can figure out the path using where is, the where is command. So I'll type in where is my Chrome driver as such. And it's telling me it's in this path. So I'll copy paste it. It's in user bin Chrome driver and I'll stick it here. Okay. And so the first thing you'd want to do is open a browser, right? So let's say you have a link or a website URL. Let's say I'm going to visit my own website. So www.bazi.com. 
ahmad.com as such. This is my website URL that I want to visit using my Chromium browser. So I'll call driver.get this URL. So running this Python three main.py, I'm using terminal to run my script, but you can use any IDE you want. So there you go. There you can see that Chromium is telling us that Chrome is being controlled by automated test software. So there you go. This is my website. And that's how you can open a website using Selenium's web driver on Python. Okay, good. So now that it's done, now that we know how to enter a certain website, you can go ahead and try other websites. So let's say I go ahead and try, I don't know. Um, let's say I want to visit a certain Wikipedia page. So www.wikipedia.com slash wiki slash Tom underscore Brady. Say I want to read a bit about Tom Brady go ahead and execute this and there you go this is Tom Brady's Wikipedia page okay okay good um, let's visit another website what well, now that we're here let's make use of visiting as many websites as we could um, let's visit the ABC website and in particular the Gray's Anatomy part of ABC run this and there you go okay so really all you need to do is with one command you can let your browser open any url okay now that we know how to you know open at any url let's learn how to interact with the page so let's say i've got the following link in my website um actually let me actually i don't know the link so i i'll just enter my website as such I'll go to, let's say, the Markowitz portfolio optimization page. So I need this link. And as you can see over here, and as you can see over here, there's a forum that you can fill up. So you can add your comment, your name, your email, your website, and post the comment. Well, we're going to be doing all this using Selenium's commands. And in particular, if we go ahead and inspect this part, over here we can see that that this text area is identified by comment so you can go ahead and fill this comment by given that you grab this part over here the text area that is identified by comment so you can easily do that first let me copy paste the link right here okay so now if we run this script, this page should open. Next, I want to grab this area over here, okay? So actually this is indexed also by the name. So this text area has a name that is comment. So all you need to do is, let's go to comment element. We're going to create a comment element that is this part right here and grab it using drivers find element by if we go here you can see that the name is comment you can do it with the id you can do it with the name i'm going to go for the name so find element by name okay and i'll pass it the name comment as simple as that let me just zoom out a bit okay so at this point, I have my comment element and I can do whatever I want with it. I could fill it up. So I'm going to fill it up as such. So let's imagine. So you can do it by send keys as such. And over here, you type your comment. So let's say Cam Newton, who's a football player. <laughs> came onto my website and typed in, I am Cam Newton and I'm about to touch down. Hut, 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 watch me on ESPN. Okay. So if I run this, 
I should be able to see this page with the following comment right here. Okay, so let me close this and run this script of code and check whether this is true or not. Okay, so I did a small mistake, which is I didn't go for driver.get. I, I scratched that out. So website URL again, driver.get. Don't forget that, it's really important. So running this, and there you go. I am Cam Newton, and I am about to touch down. <laughs> hut, hut, hut. Watch me on ESPN. Well, we can do the same thing for the name as such. Let's inspect the name, first of all have an idea about the name. Um, so the name is ID, so it's in, so it's identified by author and its name is author. So I'll copy paste this line of code, call it name element and its name is author as such. I'll go down here, name element dot send keys and fill it by cam newton as such you can do the same thing for the email inspect the email right here its name is email so email element is driver dot find element by name its name is email go down here email element dot send keys let's say the guy's email is I don't know cam <laughs> I'm wondering if ESPN guys or American football guys have emails so at nfl.com let's imagine they do <laughs> okay and one more element that I would like to fill up is the website so inspect the website its name is URL. So we go here. URL element is driver dot find element by name and URL as such. Okay, good. Now let's fill in the URL by Cam Newton's website. Okay. Um let's say it's website. I'll just you know what? I'll just go to Cam Newton website. Let's check if the guy has a website. Go here. Well, he's got an Instagram. So I'll just pass his Instagram as such. By the way, I'm a big Cam Newton fan. <laughs> so we'll pass his link over here, his Instagram link over here. And I think that's it. So let me close this guy and run the code again. We should be able to see that all the links, all the fields are filled in, are filled up. And there you go, nice and clean. One last thing we'd like to do before, you know, sending this form is clicking this button, right? This button should be indexed somewhere, right? So let's inspect it for a while. Um, down here, spec. let's, okay, so it's an input, it's a button, that's HTML, it's HTML is an input, um, well, I'm not going to use, there is no name, oh yeah, there is a name, but let's use something else, we could use name, of course, but let's learn how to use the ID, okay, it's really simple, so my button element, called driver dot, find element this time by see all those options you've got all those guys over here you can index elements as flexible as possible so if, if you don't find an ID a name you can go ahead and look for the tag name or the path the X path the class name the, its CSS selector um, what else do we have by name as we did by text so in case you find text somewhere in your page, you can go ahead and grab the text. You got a lot of options to exploit. So I'm going to use ID now. And what did we say the guy's ID is? So inspect again, it's over here. So it's a submit. So go ahead and type in submit. So at this point, I should be 
after filling the page, I have my button over here. It's indexed by button element. So all I need to do is button element dot click it as such. Now in Selenium, there's a lot of trial and error. I'm not going to lie to you. What do I mean? It means that there might be some delay over here before this all executes. So it's recommended to go ahead here and type in time dot. So by the way, time, we imported the time module right here and time has a nice function called sleep. So you can put, you can do all this sleep for a bit and then execute this sleep for one second. I am going to put it for one second. Okay. Of course it might, it might execute as such, but in some cases, I don't know, maybe due to connection speed or a page that is not well designed. So there's a lot of images that are loading and this might affect, I don't know, maybe typing some fields in. Well, this is a proper way to do it. There are alternatives such as implicit and explicit weight. We'll be seeing those just a bit from now. But this is also one way of, you know, waiting for the entire page to load. So this is my page loading. Cam Newton entered one second post should be posted. There you go. It's posted right here. Now, of course, you, your comment is awaiting moderation. This is a preview. So, but in any case, it's posted due to the click of the button right here. So really, that's how you interact with pages. Can interact by ID, by name, by CSS, by text fields, by XPath, and all these stuff that we saw right here. Find element. All those guys. CSS selector, class name. Got all those guys to exploit. Okay. Now let me open a new page. Call it main2.py. Actually, let's give it a better. Okay. And I'm going to import Selenium again, port web driver. And just in case I'm going to import the time. Um, I do need the Chrome driver. So I'll just copy paste this line of code. And let's say right now I'm going to visit the gray anatomy page again. So let me copy paste those guys. So this is the URL that I want to visit. And this should do. So let me run this code. Um, there you go. So I'm here and really this, the website is going to, you know, collect some cookies. I don't know if you've heard of cookies, but cookies is a smart way of getting your preferences about certain topics. So you can go ahead here and add your own cookies. What do I, what I mean by that is, so you've got a cookie that you would like to add. So name, let's say you're interested in clothes. Um, let's say we'll give it a value of, I don't know, a hundred as such. Um, let's put this guy here. So this is the cookies and you would like to tell this website that this is what you're interested in. So you'd like to throw the, these cookies onto your browser so that your website knows that you're interested in clothes, for example. Um, you can do that by pushing the cookie as such, add cookie to your driver. And that's it. You tell your website that you have this cookie. So let's run this and there you go. Now there's no, um, you know, there's no pop-ups here showing user preference, but normally this is how you get the job done. Okay, good. Um, let me open a new script, call it main three. Um, I don't want cookies. Let's see how we can, you know, go forward and backward in history. What I mean by that is let's say you, you click a button and then you go backwards. You want to go backwards. Well, you can easily do that using selenium. Let's go back to the same page right here. And I don't know, let's find some buttons. Well, uh, here's a button, ABC's link. Let's say I click this. 
I'm here and I want to go backward. Well, first let's generate the click. So inspect this guy. Okay. Inspect. It's over here. And the class, the class is site logo. So that's a, now is a good time to show you how to work with the class um, attribute. So the way you do that, we want to first click, we want to click the ABC logo right here to go to the next page. So driver dot find element by class name this time. And what is the class name? It's site logo. So site logo. So at this point, let's just check before I show you how to go forward and backward. Let's check if the click is generated. Well, it's not because I didn't click. <laughs> I didn't click it, right? I just grabbed it and I put it nowhere. So let's, let's get the button. Let's get the, it's not a button. It's a, it's a clickable object. So let's call it element or clickable element. And then we will click it. Let's see if this clicks. We're here. Okay, so we've got an error and it's telling me that list object has no attribute click. Let's for a moment check how the clickable element looks like. So I'm going to comment this out and print clickable element and check where this error is coming from. I mean, why do we get such an error? Okay, it's an array as you can see those brackets right here. And it has only one element. So we'd want to click this element. And for that, we need to extract it. So we need the first element. So it's indexed by zero dot click as such. Let's check if this works. Okay, run. We're on the main page. It clicks. There you go. We're on the second page. So now let's say I want to go backwards. I want to click this button right here, the backwards. This button is not part of the page. It's it's a Chromium button. So you can easily do that using forward and back. So right now we're here. Let's say we stay here, I don't know, for um, five seconds. And then we want to go backwards. So you go driver dot back as such. Let's check this if it works. Okay, we're here on the main page. Click going forward one two, three, four, five, come on, six. There you go. So five plus a bit of a delay and we're back. You can keep doing that. So let's say I want to stay here for one second. So one second and then go forward. So driver dot forward. So back to the second page. So over here, right? Um, Let's test this. So you should be able to see the home page, then the next page, then back, and then forth. So here's the next page two, three, four, five, back, one second only, and then forward. Exactly. So, really, that's how you go forward and backward in history. Okay, good. Copy paste all this to another part, main core.py. Okay, I will not need those anymore. And let's say, hmm, let's say we'd want to drag elements on a certain page. What I mean by drag is, you know, you've got a draggable element and you can drop it somewhere. Well, you can do that using Selenium. Let's say I visit the following page, um, jQuery ui.com slash draggable. Okay. See how the page looks like. So you've got this page right here and you've got this element right here that you can drag around in this area over here, as you can see. Well, if we inspect this guy, if we inspect it, it's got an ID called draggable. So that's how we can index it first. So if I go here and call this guy element, go driver dot find element by ID that is draggable. That's the name of its, that's its ID name draggable. 
So that's the element and you would like to drag it around. Well, you can easily do that using action chains of Selenium's web driver. So from Selenium dot web driver, we'd want to import action chains and action chains is going to contain an action contains actions. Um, so what we're going to do here is call action of action chains, pass it the driver. And this action has got some functionalities, all those over here. Look, I can't generate a lecture explaining all of those, but they're pretty self explanatory. Um, you can click, you can click and hold, you can, but I think the most complicated one is drag and drop because you're dragging something and then, and then dropping it. So I'm going to talk about that. And you know, we're not going to drag it and drop it elsewhere. We we don't have a bin to drop it, right? So we're going to see in the next example that we have a droppable object. So I can dr drag it and then drop it somewhere else. But here I can just drag it to some point right here. So we're going to drag and drop by a certain offset. And what is this offset? Well, first, as you can see here in the arguments, you've got the source, which is the element, right? Because we're dragging it. And then let's go back to the description. We've got X offset and Y offset. Um, let's say I want to, you know, drag it a hundred units towards the X axis and a hundred towards the Y axis. Let's see if this works. So I'll close this and I'll run the thing. It didn't move. It didn't work. It should be somewhere here, but it didn't. And as you can see here, there's an error. It's telling us that it didn't find draggable. This usually happens when you've got multiple pages within your page, if that makes sense. Go to inspect. You have your body, right? And if I go and inspect here, it's in a div found inside your body. So it's inside, you know, you've got another body right here. So you've got a body and you've got another body. Okay. So Selenium over here could get confused. And the way to unconfuse it is really easy. All you need to do is to call after you get your, you know, your page. You go driver dot switch to dot frame zero. So you're telling it to, to focus on what's important. That's how you can understand that. So you, you've got a frame, a main frame. Well, just focus on it and let's hope this works. So I'll close this run again and it didn't, but there's no error. And the reason it didn't because I didn't perform my action. So I have to go here dot perform. So this is a function performs all stored actions. So all those are my stored actions. And then I perform. Let's check if this works. There you go. It worked. <laughs> it worked. Okay. So yes. Um, let's, let's do something a bit more fun. Um, Let's go from K in range, I don't know, zero till 10. Um, we're going to perform this action, but by multiples of 10 instead of hundred. And then each time I'm going to sleep zero point, I don't know, 25 seconds. We should be able to slowly see it moving. There you go. You see it? Cool. Okay. Okay, good. So now that we know how to, you know, drag to a certain point, let's see if we, we can drag from source to destination. So I'll open a new main file called main dot main five. And let me get rid of all this and let's visit a page called droppable. So droppable. So here we've got a source and a destination. So I can drop it inside the second element. 
So let's see how we can index stuff. First of all, we need the source and we need the destination. So the source, um, so this is drag me to my target. This is the text on the source. Um, if you go up one level, it's, it's ID is draggable as before. So I can index it exactly the same way. Um, this time I'll call it source, you know, cause it's the source. And next, this guy is the destination and its ID is droppable. So going to destination, call it destination. We go driver dot find element by ID droppable as such. So now we have the source and we have the destination. Okay. What's left is to drag the source to the destination using the exact same thing. We need an action. So we define an action as such. So action is action chains, pass it the driver and then action dot drag and drop. See, we have two functions, drag and drop by offset, which we used previously over here and drag and drop as such. So drag and drop takes in two arguments, source and target. So I'll pass it the source and the target or destination. And last but not least, I would want to perform my actions. Let me close this first of all, run. And it's telling me there's an error right here. Move to requires a web element. Okay. So hold on. So either the problem is from source or destination. Let's try to debug um, the destination. I'm going to try to print it without performing this nor this run. Um, let's compare it to source. Um, let's print out source. Oh, this guy's an array. Do you see that? We've got an array over here. And do you know why? Because we passed find elements by ID, not find element. There's an S over here. <laughs> this guy returns a group of elements. And the proper way would have been this, right? Or this. Okay, so right here, we are aligned. Right here, both are the same. Yeah, both are web elements, okay? So this should work. Let me delete those. This should work. Now, does it work? I don't know. <laughs> Let's test it. There you go, it works. Good job. <laughs> so yeah, this is how you drag and drop to a certain destination using Selenium. Um, remember when we mentioned in the beginning that we might need to wait some time for loading some elements in the page? Well, let me show you what I mean. Um, let me create a main six as such. And in main six, let's assume that for some reason, now I, you need to, this is used using trial and error. Say your page, you know, takes time to load some elements more than others. So a naive way to do that would be to, you know, just do a time dot sleep it's right here. Okay. 10 seconds and then run this script. This is a bit problematic because as you can see, we're going to have to wait 10 seconds, whether the page loads fast or slow. So. Either way, we're waiting 10 seconds and here you might lose some time. So a smarter way to do that is to use implicit waiting. Implicit waiting will be called right here, let's say, or just before you get the URL. So driver underscore dot implicitly wait for 10 seconds. This will wait at most 10 seconds. So if if all elements have been loaded before 10 seconds, then no problem. We continue execution. So we don't need to wait 10 seconds. And there you go. 
Okay, so that's it on implicit weighting. Let's try to scrape the web. Let me call main7.py something very simple. Um, so right here, I'm going to be using um, all this. So I'll copy paste it here. I don't need the actions. I don't need to implicitly wait for now. Let's say I go to, I don't know. Um, so this is the Chromium website. And let's go, let's say I want to read about web scraping. Um, my computer is in French because I'm in France. So let's go read about web scraping. Let's say I'm interested in this page, okay? Um, all I need is to copy paste this URL right here and let's inspect the page. Let's get an idea because believe it or not, you're going to have to do some trial and error before going ahead and scraping websites. So you go ahead and check if there's any pattern right here. Um, let's go to body, div, div. Actually, you know what? I'm going to search for, let's say this piece of text in the inspection tab and it's over here. And guess what? They're all contained in paragraphs. Wikipedia is organized in such a way that all texts are within paragraphs. So that makes it easy for us. Why? Because I can simply use driver dot find elements by CSS selector. So those are CSS selectors. Paragraph is one type. You've got anchors as well. You've got headers, as you can see over here. This is a header H3. Um, H2, you've got a list right here. So let's say we're interested in only in paragraphs, right? So we want to extract all the paragraphs there is on my page. So on Wikipedia, all you have to do is find elements. So notice how I include, is there an element? Let's check. Is there an element? There is an element by CSS selector. And that's what you don't want to do. I'll tell you why because it will only extract. So let me just print. Um, so let's say this is my element right here. Let me show you what happens. Um, print element dot, I think it's text. So the text part will print the text. Let's see what appears here on the console and the terminal. So you get only one paragraph web scraping, blah, 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 retrieval or analysis till here. So it's the first paragraph. Well, we want all the paragraphs and that's where the function find elements comes in handy. So I'll call this elements. It's not one element, it's elements. And I'm going to loop over all elements. So for element and elements, print me all the text within the elements as such. So running this, there you go. You have all the paragraphs within this page. Just keep scrolling. All of them are here. So as you can see, it's stopped right here, right? At include. And the question is, hmm, why didn't it print this over here? Well, because this guy is not a paragraph. This block right here is not a paragraph. It's a list. If you go ahead and inspect it. Okay. Um, so the way you can inspect this is let's say I want to copy paste this snippet right here. Okay. Um, well, let's copy paste this. Okay. We found it right here. It's within an A that is nested within an L I. So I think this means in HTML list why am I guessing? Let's, let's check L I H T M L as such. Okay. It stands for, this is in French. Let's change it to English. It stands for HTML L I tag according to W three schools.com. Um, stands for a list item. So it's one item in the list, right? This is all a list. This is one item. And what is UL? I think it means unordered or something like that. 
I don't know. Let's check. UL HTML. I think it means unordered list. Exactly. It means unordered list or bulleted. Because you can have an ordered list, an OL. If you go ahead and type OL as such, I think they they're numbered now. Yeah, they're numbered because it's an ordered list. An unordered list, on the other hand, contain bullets as such. Okay, so you can go ahead and also grab all these items. Um, so. So here we've got the paragraphs. Let's say I comment this out and I want to get all my, my LIs. So all my listed items, so elements. And in the same way, I'm going to go ahead and print them for element and elements. Go ahead and print my element dot run. There you go. <laughs> There's a lot. Okay. Let's see if we manage to grab the last because you see, th those are also LIs. And this is also LIs right here. Um, so those are the references. Yeah, those are the references right here. Um, we can see the C also. So archive today, archive today, right here. Um, methods to prevent web scraping. So blocking an IP address, either manually or based on criteria. Here it is. Okay. Disabling. Here it is. Bots. Here it is. And that's how you get the job done. Okay. So we've got also other functionalities. This is the documentation for Selenium and you've got all this documentation. So go ahead and read more about explicit and implicit weights. You can see project objects. Um, you have Firefox functionality, Chrome, Phantom, Safari. Well, let's go ahead and read more about the Chrome options. Got all those options right here. So let's say I want to check the set headless um, option. Well, we can do all this functionality. Set headless means do all this without actually showing me a graphical user interface. That is without opening the browser in front of me. You can do this. Um, as you can see, we have to import the options of the Chrome web driver of Selenium. So we'll go back here and we go from Selenium dot web driver dot Chrome dot options import options as such. And right before we open the, the URL in the browser, we need to configure a driver. Now, if you go down here, webdriver.chrome, you can see that you've got options. So you've got options, which is currently set to none. We can actually configure those options and we've got all those, you know, features of the options to exploit. So what I mean is, the path is unchanged as such. So this is my driver. And now the Chrome options will be configured to options. And I will define options right here as options. Okay. And right down here, you can go ahead and configure each and every one of those. As you can see, we've got add argument right here, add encoded extension right here, add experimental option. Now we're going to set headless. So set headless to true as such. Let's run this. So Python three main seven dot py. Actually it's telling me it's deprecated. So actually we were warned about it here. So deprecated is true. Actually, maybe there's another way to do that. Um, if we go here, options are add argument and set this thing to headless as such. Let's try if this works. Actually, it does work. <laughs> there you go. It's a headless browser. Um, all we needed to do is pass an argument that is headless as such. Okay. You could also do some stuff as Add argument, you could disable your GPU, for example, you can do that. So in this case, your GPU won't be running on this instance of Selenium. You can also choose to configure your window size. So you pass window size as such, say I set it to 
400 by 200. So in that case, I won't be needing the headless. So I go, as you can see, it's open in a size of 400 by 200. Um, actually, another way to set headless, I don't know why, I just remembered that, is options.set headless as such. So there you go, it's a headless browser. You could also choose to um, disable web security. So in case you have security enabled, you can disable it using this option. You can also, if you're running some penetration testing or security, you're, you're interested in security vulnerabilities, you could play with the sandbox. So you can disable sandbox as simple as no sandbox as such. And actually what Sandbox does is it secures your computer from external exploits. So no Sandbox will disable that, okay? You could also allow running insecure content. And in case your page has a lot of graphics that you don't really care about them, so you could, so let me remove the headless, part and the window size is over here. So this page doesn't have many graphics. It doesn't have any graphics as a matter of fact. So you can disable graphics. You can disable the WebGL simply by passing disable WebGL as such. We don't have graphics again, so you're not going to see any. Actually, let's go and check for some graphics. And last but not least, you can also disable pop-up blocking as such. Okay, good. So that's all I have to say for this lecture. We covered basically all Selenium functionalities on Chrome, um, starting from how to open several pages, um, how to interact with that page, that is grab different elements of that page by name, by ID, by CSS selector, by class name, and all these good stuff, how to grab a button and how to click it. We also showed you how to fill up forums, such as the name, the email, the website, and the comment section. We also showed you how to pass cookies to a certain browser and how to go forward and backward in the history of the browser, followed by actions such as dragging and dropping by a certain offset or even dragging and dropping from a source to a destination. That is dragging a certain element and dropping it in a certain destination or a target. We also talked about implicit weighting and its usefulness when there's different elements of the page that need time to load compared to just naively sleeping for a fixed amount of time. We also saw how to scrape the web, for example, in Wikipedia, how we can extract all paragraphs uh, and as simple as find elements by CSS selector of all paragraphs, then looping over each and every paragraph to print them. And also we saw a different CSS selector that is the list item of an ordered or even an unordered list, how we can grab them and print them. And finally, we saw how to exploit different options of the Chrome browser in Selenium. That is, we saw how to open the browser in headless mode, how to disable a GPU, if any, how to control the window size of that browser, how to disable web security, how to remove the sandbox, and how to allow running insecure content, and even disabling the web GL or graphics in your browser and finally how to disable any pop-up on your browser so thanks for watching i hope you found this lecture beneficial if you did please leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel if you have any questions whatsoever kindly leave a comment down in the comment section below i'll make sure i'll get to it as soon as possible also consider donating to my patreon account any amount you wish thanks for watching and i'll see you in future lectures